What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 8 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Imric Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, we have invaded the Dragon Isles and have taken 3 out of the 4 of the territories already. It's definitely one of the most important provinces for us to take and it'll hopefully fund quite a bit of our campaign once it gets truly going. Kugath remains stuck at Karak Karakaten in a bit of a deadlock with uh, Gorisa us out here so that's actually working out reasonably well for us as long as he stays there we can destroy his stuff at our leisure and hunt him down that said last episode was a little bit more Arathon centric as he defeated Marathi and some other dark elves at the uh, at the bleak holds and we'll continue on towards continue continue on towards continuing <laughs> we'll continue being a menace to the cult of pleasure and generally speaking i've certainly grown quite fond of erathond so yeah decent chance that we'll be keeping him around anyway uh let's get going and see what we got to do this particular turn oh well erathond i should have done this at the end of last episode i guess you are in noble prestige and that looks pretty unresolvable to me yeah, not enough damage to be concerned with, so we'll occupy the place. Lovely. And A, hey, that gave you your griffin as well. Very decent likelihood we'll keep you on that. And if we get you a mage of beasts with a bunch of eagles and stuff, uh, the... Uh, yeah, that'll work. And that'll work. We okay. Actually, that's speaking of, we need eagle claws for you. Not just eagles, but eagle claws. Now we can already recruit eagles, and we will in a little bit. But we need to make use of the invocation of a Syrian here. So. What's the best way to do this? We need to do two things. First of all, we will want to build the war hall here, in order to get access to the. Silver and Guard. At the same time, I want to build the Elven Forge in order to get access to Eagle Claw Bolters. They're both tier 3, which is a bit unfortunate in this particular case. Also, we're losing public court. Okay, okay. Uncollect the income here for a couple turns, unfortunately, but necessarily. Well, let's demolish the plaza here. We'll upgrade Torsathai first rather than Vol's Anvil. And we'll upgrade the Silver and Guard and the other stuff next turn. While we still have one turn of uh, Invocation of Assyrian remaining. Yeah, and we'll get the Eagle Claw Boltors there as well. And then we'll go for Vol's Anvil afterwards. We'll probably transfer the location of the... Hmm... Of the Elven Forge. And it's, it's just that it needs Tier 3 and we need the military buildings there as well. I mean, I suppose what we could do is upgrade this and destroy the Colonnade instead. It's just that we've invested more into it than we have in the plaza, which is what's making me, which is what's making me question that. And we'd have to transfer things. Yeah, it's fine as it is. It's just it's just fine. It's fine. <laughs> he needs a retrofit. Anyway, uh, he's good where he is. Uh, Feodin is stuck where she is. Arwenel. You know what? Since Kugath is kind of stuck here, and I'm willing to bet that he will remain stuck, I think we can probably move. Let's try to get these dragons into Imric's army as fast as possible. And frankly, this can't hurt the dragons. We've seen these two dragons nearly solo a full stack of beastmen so uh, <laughs> I don't think that uh, I don't think they're going to be that concerned about a couple of nurgling units and they can't oh they can't oh damn you know what I should have done I should have gone just like right here instead and they wouldn't even have physically been able to reach us so I guess it might be an interesting fight even if, if they do. So anyway, uh, let's see, Iolair. Now we could start collecting some influence with you a little bit, uh, 423, it's a little bit costly. On the one hand, on the other hand, we do want influence. On the other, other hand, it's only one per turn. Mm, you know, I think we'll wait. We got a bunch of stuff that we have to build, though as to whether any of it has to be done this turn remains to be seen. Let's take a look at the provinces that are going really negative right now, other than Dragon Isles, like Mount Gunbad's at minus seven. We can uncollect the income there for a bit, just while we have that damn unhappy populist debuff and the bleak coast we can't do anything about because that's slaneshi influence that's screwing us over there mount gunbat is fine calador we just did griffin gate obviously wouldn't collect income anyway and the rest i guess is fine all right then also you don't need to go here you can go to mount gray hag instead and reduce the costs next turn for when we upgrade the stuff here 
Yes, that'll work. Good, Ruinous. Good. All right, and I do believe, unless we have diplomacy, that should be the end turn for us. And we're looking good. All right. Skip, 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 and end the turn then. While the turn is ending, as usual, we did reach the engagement threshold, and so this will be an hour-long episode, and similarly, if we reach 400 likes and 50 comments, wait, or something along those lines, uh, the next episode will be an hour long as well. And uh, we could also do another potentially double episode day on Saturday if we continue the streak. Now, uh, you want us to join War Against the Servants of the Conclave for a decent bit of cash, but I don't think we can. I mean, it's quite a bit of cash. I'm actually not sure. Are the Servants of the Conclave actually able to leave their territory? Like, if we declare war on them, would they actually be able to physically move to the Gates of Jar, or are they stuck to their main uh, territory, sort of? Their main province? And are only able to just retake that main province? If anybody knows, please let me know, because... If that was the case... I would most definitely accept the decent bit of cash, but I'm not really willing to risk the demon stump and the gates of Jar being destroyed, so, yeah. At least not until we build walls there so that they can defend themselves. Oh, also, that reminds me, Shattered Stone Bay, you're one of the broken territories, aren't you? Dealt with this a lot in Norska. Norska has a lot of uh, ports that don't actually work. And I remember Shatterstone Bay being annoying, so I think it's one of them as well. Let's find out. Ah, Carcassonne and Curran Confederated. Creator for Feodian, great. Sun Dragon for Michaela. Hey, that's a nice buff. And she most definitely deserve it. That deserves it, rather. I'm uh, still collecting ideas for her name and for her lore, and generally speaking, but she's definitely going to uh, stick around as a legendary character. Hmm. And what kind of points do we want to assign? I do use Cascading Fire Cloak admittedly a lot, so I feel like it's probably a good investment. It's only minus one magic cost, but once again, considering how much we use it, it's probably uh, it's probably worth our time. Anyway, just to double check, Imrik. Yeah, you're not able to land here. Alright, fine, fine, fine. So here's what we'll do. We'll land you like... So... Wait. R1L will want you to land as well. Ooh, and you can basically only land here. Okay, okay, okay. Go, like, here. I assume you can actually land. Because if you can't, we'll have to stay out at sea with Imrik, which is a bit of an annoyance, but what can you do? And... No, oh, I assumed incorrectly. She can't land. All right, then, Imrik. Go right here. Just right beside her. Wait. Yeah. Race sail! And we'll meet up with the dragons at Shattered Stone Bay next turn, I guess. Oh, I guess you can go into regular stance from here. Alrighty, and good enough. Next up, Erathon once again, because Feodian can't move. Uh, let's send you to the Bleak Hold Fortress, and... Ooh, there's an important thing to find out there. So, wait, let's level you up first, and then let's get going. You have Silver Torrent, I do believe. Well, you'll want a movable force. You'll also, you'll also want favorable winds as well. And a movable force, eh? Yeah. Now, this will buff up the Eagle Claws that you will eventually have. This will buff up the Silver and Guard that you will eventually have. And then this will buff up the Eagles that you do have. And will eventually have more of. Probably at least six of them. And uh, somebody suggested maybe some Hawk Riders in here as well for a sort of bird-tastic army. And I don't see why not if we can make it happen. And of course, we'll need the na we'll need names for the eagles as well, folks. Not just dragons. And ooh, this actually looks like it's worth fighting. Look at that. We got shades. We got dread knights. We got black guard, dark shards. Uh, well, not yeah, always dark shards, but uh, Harganeth executioners and damn sorceresses. Yeah, all right. And this will definitely be worth our time. So we're gonna level up before we go on in. Hey, you, sir. Uh, you just reminded me of something, Hemric. Your guy, Therion. Byron, rather. Noah Thilmar Chariot, go on the Bard of the Thilmar Steed. Technically, the Great Eagle is the better pick, especially considering it applies uh, bleed, but I kind of like this noble on the Steed because he can ride into battle with the, uh, with the Dragon Princes. It kind of makes more sense to me that way. Anyway, you. We could keep doing the High Elf Affairs, and we could always redo it later on if needed. We don't have enough ports for this to make a ton of money, though. We're s Once we have Ulthwan, uh, this will probably make a lot of money. Possibly more money than High Elf Affairs. 
But in the early game, this is probably the better pick. Let's go high elf affairs. Every a little bit of cash that we can get, we will nice. get. Erathon, time to fight my friend. Let's get to it. Alright, here we go. Erathon debuting his griffin to lead the eagles of his army. Just the two for now, or just the two units, but uh, more to come later. Anyway, the battle is going to start off rather quickly with an enemy opening a portal and summoning a bunch of demonettes who will charge the back line of archers. I hadn't checked the enemy army abilities, so I hadn't realized that they had this option available to them. Fortunately, because we have eagles, and the Griffin, all of which are extremely fast. They're able to close the distance and get into combat pretty much immediately and start ripping those demon nets apart. The bleed, the damage, the... Well, the armor piercing isn't going to be too useful here, but uh, uh, nonetheless, the demon nets will get mobbed and obliterated very, very quickly. That said, this does mean we're going to need to deal with this and possibly more summons, as I don't know how many exactly are going to to potentially open up or how many portals so we're going to keep some spears in our back line and uh, just to surround our archers while they do the damage speaking of archers doing the damage first of the enemy units of dark shards with shields even uh, get focused down by every single one of our range units and obliterated while we move the flyers in to start going after the enemy towers not dragons quite yet, but you gotta start with Eagle and work your way up to dragon. Well, not counting Imrak's army, of course. Anyway, enemy tower has to be targeted here so it doesn't fire upon our main line units who are getting ready to defend, sort of, or reverse siege of this particular barricade. Thing is, enemy army has quite a few elites. Our entire army, Eagles included, are all tier 2. Eagles are tier 2 units. Uh, if I can select select one. And there we go. Just like spears and just like archers. Though I think that's a little bit of a disservice to the uh, the eagles perhaps, but nonetheless. And just like spears and archers. The enemy's army, at least a third of it, is made up of high tier units. They've got two shades, they've got three black garden executioners, and they've got two cold one dread knights. So two tier three units, three tier four units, and two tier five units. And the dread knights against uh, our, uh, against our tier 2 spam. So, definitely some disparity there, plus the fact that they have a defensive position. And that said, Arathon has worked with, uh, well, a lot of... Uh uh, a lot of better armies are faced off against a lot of better armies and we have to have some confidence in him, especially now that he has the Griffin. Now we are going to try to push on out of here so we do activate our, uh, uh, our fiery convocation, mostly just to try to knock the enemies away. It's not going to do a crazy amount of damage to the Cold One Dread Knights, only taking about 20% of their HP, but clipping the executioners pretty hard. Our eagles are still working on the uh, tower here, we had to drop them down so that they uh, destroy the enemy dark shards firing at them first. And now we're going to back Arathon away, just so that our range units are well in range of the enemy and actually able to fire upon them. The Cold One Dread Knights uh, raise their shields and charge forth, surging into the line of spears, heedless of uh, the anti-large damage, especially considering, once again, that unit disparity. The Dread Knights will be able to rip those spears apart rather quickly, so we do send Arathon in and support with a range as well. And these guys are still taking quite a while to go down. Back here, I do believe the enemy has opened another uh, Chaos Portal and summoned more Demonettes, but with our spears, like almost all of our spears, all but one unit surrounding our range units, at least they have managed to keep them safe and destroy those Demonettes. Taking some damage, mind you, but worth it to keep the range units firing, at least until they're out of ammunition. Yeah. 
All right, and down go the last of the demon. That's the cold one. Drug Knights are still fighting and have been joined by a second unit. Arathon, unfortunately, has taken quite a beating now. Uh, he's done quite a bit of damage himself, but is below half HP as he was surrounded by those two units of cold one. Drug Knights are at the very least fighting in the very center. Our staunch spear line is going to have to hold as best they can. One of the units is sent running by the two units of Dread Knights, but we got more spears where that came from. Gonna have to reduce some of our defenses of our archers and make use of additional uh, spears on the front line as we just can't hold otherwise. Looks like more enemy units are moving on in to help. Some bleak swords have joined the Cold One Dread Knights who are still very much fighting and the enemy Death Hag is in here as well, currently being attacked by our noble as well as Erathon, though we will once again have to be careful with him. Nice swap of stats here as well as we activate Stand Your Ground to give all of our melee units a massive 98 melee defense total as well as the reduction to the enemy's melee attack and the Cold One Dread Knights and melee defense as well via that Helm of Discord. Definitely needed as our spears were being absolutely crushed by those uh, Dread Knights. And we just gotta take at least a few more seconds of filling them with arrows. That said, there's more elites where that came from. A full HP unit of Black Guard of Nagaron is moving in to back up of those Cold One Dread Knights. Definitely a nice garrison. Uh, this should, however, hurt quite a bit. Another fiery convocation come in. Doesn't bounce right back, but at least it bounced this way instead. Uh, I wasn't willing to risk moving it this way as it could have potentially bounced through our spears and frankly killed them all. That said, the fiery convocation takes about 50% of the HP, maybe 55% of the HP, off those Black Guard of Nagarond, which was sorely needed. In the meantime, however, the eagles are still still doing work. They have landed upon the uh, Dark Shards, uh, two units of Dark Shards here, and are obliterating them uh, fairly quickly. Gotta do the work as fast as we can, however, lest we get charged by executioners or something else that's scary. Out here, it looks like more of our spears are running and we're down to one. Arathon is backed up, but the Noble continues to hold the line, together with the rest of the spears. And he has a halberd, so that does make sense. And there's still a few Cold One Dread Knights in here. I noticed that the Dread Knights are willing to fight to the last, to the very, very last unit. That unit, uh, I think, was just is just going to get killed to a man. See, these guys are still fighting with 82 HP and two units remaining. Gotta love that murderous master. I was trying to select the Murderous Mastery. You gotta love that Murderous Mastery is what I was gonna say. Down to the 1 and 67 HP, last of the Dread Knights of Unit 1, and has in fact charged through our spears and started to attack briefly. Our archers still managing to kill at least a few off before at last going down. Definitely a heroic effort from that particular Dread Knight. And fighting to the last, if nothing else, we do have to admire it. Arathon has backed into the fight once more and is now surrounded by Blackguard of Nagrond and the second unit of uh, Dread Knights. We are now attempting to pin cushion while Arathon attempts to use his mass to move out of the uh, move out of the fray. Can't be fighting all that many halberds, armor piercing halberds at that. The eagles in the background continue to do work as well, having heavily damaged the enemy archers. They did have to back off until the enemy executioners did themselves back off, but have now found some shades to work on as well. Have not lost a single unit of the eagles so far, and I do believe they've done the most damage out of our units with the possible exception of Arathon, who is now heavily damaged, having fought the enemy elites. But he was very much needed to use his mass and his damage and damage absorption to hold the line against the uh, better enemy infantry. Our arrows are starting to run out. The arrow rain down to a trickle compared to what it was before, as about half of our units of archers are out of ammunition. And we're going to have to make whatever ammunition remains count. Enemy Death Hag, by the looks of it, down to about 15% of her HP and is about to book it on out of there, the Noble having managed to hold her off together with his spears. 
that we're soon going to start running out of spears that actually have HP. On the heels of the Black Guard of Nagarond and Drug Knights, both of which are nearly out of the picture now, there arrive some Executioners. A little bit jealous, because you gotta love these units. And it's, Executioners have always felt more fun to me than, uh, uh, than the Swordsmasters of Hoa, but that's just me. Anyway. Here they go. Oh, I really enjoyed in the Amalekith campaign being able to use both the High Elven and Dark Elven units at the same time. And that was a treat. Granted, you didn't get the full roster, but being able to use those uh, Phoenix Guard in combination with the Black Guard was neat. And other stuff as well. Anyway, the Executioners continue to fight, and, well, some of them are getting uh, uh, hurt by the Spears, though I imagine that the range units are the ones doing most of the damage, though that said, that damage is basically done, as only two of our units now have ammunition. Another bound ability as that Wind Spell, uh, or Breath Spell, rather, moves through the enemy lines, and the Executioners continue to cut their way through droves of Spears. Just like we've run out of ammunition, we're soon going to start running out of spears, but the AI has certainly given us an epic brawl as it's held back the line. That said, the battle is still very much in our favor. Arathon has peeled away and is still doing work chasing after dark shards in the same manner as the eagles here. Another one of our eagles units goes after this dark shard unit, while the other one goes after the enemy supreme sorceress. We've certainly seen the eagles be effective unit assassins before, and I expect they'll be effective unit assassins again as the sorceress won't be able to hold them all off. There we go, and is too ineffective in melee to actually damage them and potentially kill a unit. Arathon can still certainly send this unit of dark shards running by himself, and uh, surprisingly the... Uh, Surprisingly, the griffin doesn't have bleed, but I guess the reason for that is so that the eagle mount was a little bit more unique. You know, you'd think that, uh, well, uh, Griffin seems like it would inflict bleeding to enemies, but anyway. With that, it looks like the Sorceress will shatter, and that was a much, much needed morale shock. I'd say the Griffins, or the Eagles rather, managed to carry the day as they forced the last of the enemy units, a few of them remaining with full HP, to shatter, and the battle to be ours. And just on time, we had, what, two units of spears left in reserve, and one unit together with that noble still holding, and uh, we managed to pull off a Pyrrhic victory. Very, very nice fight. Ooh, all right, very nice. A Pyrrhic victory, and it certainly took a, a fair bit of effort. Those Black Guard of Nagarond and Executioners, of course, tough to bring down. That Death Hag in the midst of our troops as well. And, of course, the Cold One and Dread Knights. Way, way too many elites compared to what we have here. But, of course, it's an enemy garrison, and uh, we're an attacking force. The Eagles, once again, did pretty fantastic, as they tend to do, and outdid the Archers in terms of damage. Considering this is going to be our eagle-themed army, uh, it makes sense for the eagles to continue to be the stars of the show. Aside from Arathon himself on his griffin, can't really separate how much damage he did himself from how much damage was done by that bound fiery convocation. Um, but I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that he did well. Also, while fighting the battle, I was kind of uh, musing on what his lore could be, since I'm too attached to him now uh, to let him go. And I've decided, at the very least, his his uh, title is going to be Arathon the Silveran Talon. Uh, there we go, because he's going to have Silveran Guard in addition to uh, Eagles. Yes, <laughs> I went the lazy route with the name. But yes, Arathon the Silveran Talon, the Eagle Prince of Kalador. Uh, my idea is basically since that he was one of the uh, one of the nobles left behind on Kalador that had fallen to indolence, or at least belonging to uh, one of the families uh, that had while Imric went uh, fighting. Uh, it could be said in derision 
derision and uh, generally speaking and derision or mockery not of eagles but of the sort of lofty idea uh, or ideals whatever there's uh, lofty attitudes that Caledorians generally have you gotta remember that Caledorians are like the most elvish of the elves they live up here in the mountains looking down on the rest of Ulthuan and thinking they're uh, better than the rest of the elves are they wrong maybe not but <laughs> they probably shouldn't say it and uh, yeah all the elves basically all the other elves basically find Caledorians kind of insufferable and for being so arrogant which one coming from other elves is uh, is certainly something but anyway <laughs> Uh, one thing I vaguely recall is that the dragon princes like would won't like uh, lower their uh, lower their standards in the presence of the uh, Phoenix King. That's how arrogant these guys are. But anyway, as I was talking about uh, Arathon here, uh, the idea is uh, that. Uh, uh, that the Eagle Prince is sort of like a mocking title that was originally uh, given to him, and even by other the el I, other elves could say this, whereas Caledorians could, sing could think this is an insult as well. Possibly because they think that Arathond might not be good enough to be a Dragon Prince, so is an Eagle Prince, ha ha ha. Uh, or possibly because other elves might be mocking the Caledorian legacy. But the idea is uh, that's how it starts but eventually and with you know a few possibly <laughs> arrivals uh, suspiciously eaten by eagles or something like that uh, the name came to be a not so much said in mockery uh, but in fear or respect or what have you anyway that's my idea you guys uh, feel free to contribute to it as you will as once again my job is to more or less curate the uh, community canon lore and uh, well sort of emergent storytelling aspect of the game like I mean I didn't set out to make this guy eagle themed it's sort of just happened and that's how some of this uh, lore generally happens anyway uh, let's see what you got in terms of level up my eagerly friend you are gonna get a movable force for your silver and guard or spears for now and eventually silver and guard they can't really take advantage of it but they soon will be able to as the ranks are getting up there next we have to get replenished troops no choice and these guys aren't healing up enough hmm and I fear, let's see. Okay, you know what? We can test this. Uh, oh, Bleak Hold Fortress has... Oh, it has an eagle. Ah, but it's... Uh, it's going to take three turns to recruit here, so we're better off recruiting eagles elsewhere anyway. As in back on... Uh, back on Calador. All right, that's fine. We'll do that. Uh, what I want to see is, considering this place has two military structures, will they trade Vol's Anvil for... Oh, we can't even ask for Vol's Anvil, we have to ask for Hag Hall first. Alright, fine. Hag Hall is worth 69. Nice, but also not so nice. I mean, proximity to Slanesh and all. Uh, why is this worth so much? It's just a garbage outpost. Why do you even care about it? Oh, wow. It's almost to there. Drone Morgan's Car on Car. Minus 5.9, and then they wouldn't do it for 11k. Yeah, I don't like that. I'd say there's a decent likelihood we destroy them. Oh, we can always make friends with the Wood Elves and Athaloran rather than these ones. Oh, we can't let them hold on to Vol's Anvil. It's just way, way too strong. We could uh, trade their territory to Kotep instead, which also kind of works for me. Oh, no. What's happening here? Malice. Why are you here? <laughs> Wait, you're telling me he sailed all the way from out here just to annoy Nagareth? That's kind of funny. But uh, Nagareth, how are you doing? Two territories on Nagareth, one territory on Lord Order of Lore Masters. Would you please confederate, you... Damn. You see? You see why the Caledorians look down on you other elves? Do you see? <laughs> oh, man. Balance. Balance. Trade. Sure, go for it. I'm just amusing myself today. Uh, Northern and Western Provinces, I would like to get some alliances going with you. Not quite good enough, eh? Really? Minus 19, considering you have no balance of power and are very much in trouble? It's kind of surprising. I think they'd be a little bit friendlier, but oh well. Uh, Feodian, you're still stuck. Architect Luaran, you are headed here to Mount Greyhag. At least briefly. 
And we will upgrade, I guess, Crookback Mountain first for 1450. Very nice and cheap. And this is also the last turn we have of Invocation of Assyrian. So if we want to make use of it, we got to make use of it now. You're then going to move back to the Sentinels, like so. We are go Oh, wait, wait, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh. These guys are still here, right? Eh? Mm. Well, I guess if we recruit eagles here, we can always uh, use them for that particular purpose. Uh, we'll want to build this for the Silveran Guard, and we'll also want to build the Elven Forge. But we can't do it until next turn anyway. I mean, I guess we can start on the uh, Citizen Militia building. Alright, fair enough. Uh, we got three more turns until we can recollect income here. We can maintain Lost Splendor, though, as we have no other choice in the matter. And same here, and then... I guess if we upgrade you, 600 and 900, reasonable, and... I mean, I guess we go for the Artisan here. I would like another... I would like another... Ah, ah stop that. Uh, I would like another Embassy. Hmm... In theory, the embassies should eventually replace the uh, growth territories. But right now, it might be better to build the elven fairgrounds. A, because they're cheap, and B, because they also provide construction cost reduction. Probably the way to do it. Anyway, you can also maintain the reductions for now. Do we still need the defenses of the Black Fortress? I think for now we do. While Kugeth isn't moving, it doesn't mean he won't start to move. Uh, you're fine. And what about down here? And this place is good, it's growing, it's public order is fine as well, and there's nothing to be done there. What about the negatives here? Mm. You know, we're going to be building a lot of stuff up here, and the sea dragon's teeth are going to be very costly, so we should probably look into starting to move southward. Not this turn, though, as... Wait, is there anything that will give you public order? Just out of curiosity? No. Alright, go into Lilith's blessing, then. Yeah, we'll wait here for one turn to upgrade the stuff at the Crookback Mountain, and then we'll move down to the Dragon Isles afterwards. Imrik, you've moved. Bedian has moved. Isle Lair. Eh, just stay here. I'm not, I'm not going to waste money on doing stuff with you yet. Just keep an eye on Kugath. We'll need to know if he starts moving this way through to the Sentinels, because it'll mean we'll have to move back around that way. All right, that looks good to me. We checked diplomacy already. Ah, I caught myself that time. And that means we're ready to end the turn after doing... Ooh, corruption reduction or public order. I think we gotta go public order first. The corruption's already being reduced fairly decently here. Assuming that Sokhos doesn't land and retake Arnheim, considering it has basically no defenses. I guess we'll loop down here. Continue protecting Ulthwan by destroying Marathi's stacks. And then we'll deal with the Wood Elves as needed. We'll give them one more opportunity, perhaps, to trade us the uh, stuff here. And then if Marathi falls by that time, we'll attack them if needed. Plus, by then, we'll probably have another army ready to go out here. Yeah. I fear, Toranrock, you're going to have to not collect money for another turn as well. Ugh, man, we're losing out on 1,200 gold per turn right now. Just due to that unhappy populace. But there ain't anything we can do about it. And so, there is nothing we will. All right, skip, 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 and turn. SFO tends to have these sort of... I don't know what to call them. This sort of like mid-game hurdle where if you, whereas, oh damn, well this was a long time coming, uh, to be fair. I'm actually kind of surprised that Clan Moors is willing to declare war on us right now, when considering they're in the midst of the war against Karazakarak. Do we call Karak Adrinenko to aid us? Is the question. Hmm... Honestly, I'd kind of prefer Karakadrin to just sort of be up here and not deal with us, so I think we'll not call them to help. It's fine. At least for now. Now this also likely means we'll need to start generating a smaller army to potentially defend these territories against Queek's attacks. Granted, we were going to move towards Queek right after we knocked out Kugath anyway. Oh, but we'll probably need some kind of defenses. All right, a little bit of influence gained, confederation between Nuln and Reichland. Oh, bye. Uh, I guess uh, Elspeth wasn't doing so hot. Imrik, you shall land at... Wait, are you telling me you can land here now rather than here? Are you serious, dude? Huh. 
I thought it was broken. That's so rude. Is there a way to... Well, I guess we can head to Scrap Towers anyway. Hmm. Alright, fine. Just land. <laughs> Damn you, broken territories. Uh, you are going to swap the dragons to Imric because he can get them at like half price. And in terms of what you'll take, I guess you can take a couple of the regular high elven archers. You can hold on to them as we'll be trading them to another lord in a little bit. There we go. So, so much cheaper. Almost half price. Not quite, but nearly there. Oh, that also reminds me. We're doing the marble stockpile, but we also really want to do military advancements into this stuff. Martial law, recall colonists, harbingers called vows of fealty, and annuli roots. Uh, roosts, or rather, all of these will give us a massive reduction in upkeep for a bunch of stuff. Pretty important. But yeah, as I was saying, there's sort of like a hurdle uh, to cross for in SFO, generally speaking, whereas in the regular campaigns in vanilla, uh, you sort of just steadily climb in terms of your income over time. Whereas in SFO, yes, there's sort of a time where you suddenly jump massively. For those watching the Kislev campaign, on turn 75 in Kislev, we were making roughly 10,000 gold per turn. By turn 84, we were making over 40,000 gold per turn. So in less than 10 turns, we made four times as much as income, which is a pretty massive jump. So that's sort of uh, and sort of what I'm talking about. Now, Emric, just to double check, are you able to reach Scrap Towers in one turn from here? It looks like you are. Should be okay. I believe these guys don't randomly declare war on us. Hmm. Let me just see what's going on here. The Bone Gulch should be able to defend itself. This is Star Dragon and Dragon Princes. Ashridge Mountains are more trouble. We've kept the defenses up at Crookback Mountain, so that should be fine as well. Darkhold obviously wouldn't be able to hold itself, however. Also, you still need to recruit those Dragon Princes, but we can't deal with them right now. Ah, we got some Ogre Mercs if we, uh, if we desire them. Hmm. Well, let's, uh, let's do some stuff. Uh, Aerothond... You will still need to move, sir. I'm gonna keep on ignoring you, but I would also just like to double check this. That's still 9.2. And we're against car and car. No, wouldn't do it for 11,000 either. Uh, and that's not even Vol's Anvil, that's just Hag Hall. Yeah, what else? You're gonna have to die. You're gonna have to die, and I don't see how we can avoid it. Because you're refusing to trade those territories. Uh, if you could reach Arnheim, that would be swell, but it looks like you cannot. So you're going to go to the... Ah, oh, there's an island here as well. Damn. You know what? I think we're just going to move like so. I'm going to risk the march stance and just hope that we don't get obliterated for it. The faster we get down here, the faster we can maybe knock out Sokos and then possibly grab the island right into Grey Rock Point if these guys don't grab it on the way. We shall see. But it certainly seems like an opportune thing. Uh, you're kind of stuck here by the looks of it, and Amelia Scott lost her stack. Are you able to peace out now? Nope. <laughs> Actually, while we're in Diplo, let's take another quick look here. Oh, those defenders are looking a little bit friendlier than they were before. Not bad, not bad. Tyrannoch, ready for a defensive alliance, potentially. And we could certainly do that, if nothing else, for the vision that they offer as well. Oh, right, they're fighting Illyrian. Hey, yeah, you know what? Let's not do that yet. Let's not do that. And nobody wants to confederate. Teclas, you still alive down there, buddy? Mm, I don't like that you've lost your one territory. Oh, freaking Teclas, you're just... You're, you're, you're not doing good, man. You're not doing good at all, but anyway... Now let's see what we gotta build. First of all, you have to obviously switch to rebuild Lost Splendor. We got a minus 13, which is only for one turn. I guess for the one turn, we uncollect the income, and then we recollect it next turn. The corruption is already going down massively, and we'll have to build stuff. You can build the Woodsman's Hut, even without the reductions. I'm gonna miss that invocation, but... You know what? Let's let's wait on the Woodsman's Hut for the reductions. I lied. Uh, Mount Greyhag and Bleak Hold. So you're going to upgrade the Elven Artisan. You are otherwise fine. 
and can switch back to either Tribute or Growth. I'm going to say Banish Corruption and Grow one. Oh, actually, no, I lied. This has to be upgraded to Tier 3. My bad. You're going to then go here to Mount Greyhag, wherein we will upgrade you, Iron Smelter. We will then, well, continue to ignore the Enchanted Walls. The question here is, do we go for the Amphitheater for more money? Or do we do something else? I'm almost tempted to, well, temporarily build the uh, the War Hall here. We could also build a Mount Greyhag. Less temporarily, maybe. Mm. But the problem with that is it'll take way, way more turns than uh, building it here for cheap, temporarily, and then using it to recruit Lothar and Seaguard for another one of our armies. Which could be a decent idea. Hmm... There's also the Gate Guard that we'll probably want in a few armies in order to act as supports since they offer some very nice stuff. Especially the Bolster's marksmanship thing. Okay, you know what? I want to see something. Military Advancements is already available. What do we need to build Military Advancements 3? Grand Repository, which is a... Oh, it's another mage thing. Okay, so we can ignore that by and large. Cultural Advancements requires an Elven Court, which is a tier 5, meaning it's irrelevant to us and will be for quite the while. Military Advancements, just Tower of Mages. Ulthuan's Glory requires an Amphitheater, which is a tier 5, which is what I was thinking of building anyway. Hmm... All right, fine. Temporarily build the militia camp. We're gonna need the uh, we're gonna need the military structures. This place is still fine and still growing, though I am tempted to republic orderize it just for a while. And go to tribute to the Phoenix King just while we still have that damn unhappy populist debuff. And you are all looking okay. All right, the rest of that looks good. Next up, we have. You. We need to upgrade. Oh, 2.4k. That's intense. Uh, well, either way, we need the rally field here, and we'll need to build the Elven Forge. It's going to take a fair few turns. How many turns do we have until we can get the invocation of Sirian back up? 20. Okay, so yeah, we would no choice but to uh, spend the money on all this. Go for it. And get ready to start uh, the retrofit for Arathon's army. He's earned it. And I believe the rest is good. Kugat, still where you are? Yes, indeed. So skip, 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 skip. And end the turn again. I better forget anything. Alright, population surplus in Kalidor, but yeah, it's gonna take a while for it to grow to tier 4. We're gonna have to be waiting on that. Clan Wars is coming, I'm sure. Even if they are busy fighting the uh, Karazakarag Dwarfs, what we have to watch out for, really, is them piecing out with the Karazakarag Dwarfs. Um, because then they'll fully turn their attentions on us, and it's very much possible because Karazakarek is fighting Wurzag at the same time as they're fighting uh, Quik. They could also, if they currently occupy Desolation of Nagash, and reason suggests that they do, jump out of it and into Bone Gulch. Talk, then. We're gonna start war, at least for now. Oh, while we're here. Quick deal. Anything for anybody? I'm waiting. Still one. Nagareth, you're also down to one minus 109 confederation. Man, the elves really don't want to confederate. I mean, in the Kids of Campaign, we had to threaten Astankia to confederate because she was going to die, but still. Uh, anyway, Arwenil, I'm going to go right here. And wait, just make sure that you're not in Imric's way, really. Oh my. Would you look at that? Elman Gorst. What's the likelihood he attacks us? It'd be pretty fun if he did, but uh, hmm. we're gonna take the scrap towers and we're gonna have to leave the territory. The problem is that uh, we don't want to lose Arwenel. Oh, the armies here are garbage anyway. You know what I should have done? I should have just attacked Helmand Gorse and destroyed both those armies. Could have destroyed them both at the same time because Helmand's stuck in march stance and it would have forced both of these armies into combat. I mean, we're gonna destroy him either way. And we'll just have to decide what we do about Greasy there. Uh, anyway, Emric, go to... If I could just... If I could just... Damn, Meneath near too big. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's eaten too many... Uh, uh, he's eaten too many orcs and goblins and stuff. Uh, how to resolve. Yes. Eh, no teensy chance. bit of damage. Who knows? It might prompt these guys into an attack. We will... Occupy, like so. 
Scroll of Shielding, don't care about it. Uh, might transform it into something else. Don't collect the income here. You are still not collecting the income, eh? You can upgrade your Haven. Uh, we can now, I guess, upgrade the Woodsman's Hut for cheaper, and I guess we have no choice but to build up the Colonnade. And despite the expense, and hope that the place fixes itself. We can also switch you to Tribute to the Phoenix King and just hope that uh, you don't force a, uh, a rebellion. I'd love for Emmerich to heal, but we can't risk Arwenal dying. Hmm. We could also just disband her. But uh, leeching the XP is also a good idea, so... Even if she is kind of wet. No, I was wondering whether we, should, we could be sort of escape her from here, but no. And we could take a little bit of attrition for our trouble. Sorry, buddy. And then we'll pop Arwenel into the... Settlement. Then if she gets besieged... You know what? Just stay both stay out here. Loyalty is all. I don't think these guys are going to attack, but I'd rather not risk it. Uh, wait. These guys are at war, yes? Yes. Meaning, if we tell them to get the heck out of here, they will dislike us more, and then these guys might like us a little bit more? Possibly? Try a little bit of everything. Feyadian, you are stuck until we can afford a new unit of dragon princes. These guys are... Huh. Interesting. Can you reach any of this? Sort of. I wanted to go this way, but I also kind of don't like how these guys are here. Hmm. And go here. I'm gonna have to deal with them. And keep an eye on this, though it doesn't look like much. Alright, you're gonna back off, and can we still reach you is the question. I think that'll force us to just be out of reach. Yeah, you moved into... Idiot. <laughs> okay, here's a question. If we go right here, would they be able to sail past us? Yes, they would. I will see to it. Ah, uh, that's a shame. But what can you do? Sailing away. Not that we really care about these territories right now, anyway. And, huh, by the looks of it, they're probably gonna rebel. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, Kugath still here? Yes, he's still here. Deadlock is strong. And I believe you need an upgrade. Don't have much money to spend this turn, but what can you do? And then you can upgrade to the next tier. Which maxes out what we need to do in this territory, and this allows us to go back into, I guess, Banish Corruption for the additional growth. Then you can move back here. You can continue growing for at least one more turn. Public Order is good here. We get one more turn of that damn Public Order debuff, which will put us back over 4,000 gold per turn. Good. And one more turn until Marble Stockpiles. Maybe I should have waited to build up all the military structures here until that was good. But oh well. I mean, we got the next level of the war hall anyway. Skip, 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 skip. And turn. Alright, let's see if the undead decide to go for us. Huh, where's Lariel going? I wonder if she's gonna go... Really? You're fighting Nakari to the north? Why are you heading south? I assume she's going to try to head to the Maelstrom War just to go after the uh, Vampire Coast Armies, but... I feel like Nakari is a little bit uh, more of a threat and... Huh. Well, we were originally expecting these guys to declare war on us eventually. I'm surprised that they did so now. Oh, don't bother calling our allies to help. We'll just kill them all off. Kugat's stuck in a deadlock after all. It's not like he's a major threat. Caravan of Blue Roses did not declare war on us. Which I guess is a good thing in this particular case. Let's fight some ogres if we can reach them then. Even with the damaged army, it shouldn't be any trouble. Hmm. These guys are going to take Flayed Rock, eh? We could once again destroy both of their armies. Hmm. The problem is we can't really leave Thorg here, because if we do, he'll move out here and potentially annoy some of these units or armies. Meaning we have to go to Scrap Tower's camp. And so, you are going to go into an camp because you have suffered damage. Probably wouldn't be able to take both of these. Hmm. All these factions suddenly declaring war on us. So rude. So very, very rude. Go here. And go into Noble Prestige. We should be able to auto-resolve the camp. Even if we are damaged. It's not like we're very damaged. Auto-resolve. And we'll have to heal up after this one camp afterwards. A decent bit of cash, though. Take it. 
All right, camp destroyed, feather float, twerk. We'll take a look at some potential items as well and camp here. And you know what? I think or I fear that you won't be able to encamp, so... Go here. You will proceed in regular or Lilith's blessing stance to here. And we'll ignore this. I don't think that this guy can kill off Kugat's main stack. His army is too weak, so it shouldn't be an issue for us. I don't think. I also wanted to see something. There was a... Dashing Princess Silverhelms and Illyrian Reavers? No, not the one I wanted. There was another one that was really good for an early game run, but we don't have it yet. Alright, we'll just have to keep an eye out on the uh, Lords. Ooh, wait. Efficient is pretty decent. Upkeep reduction minus 20% for basically all of the base units. Hmm. Certainly worth looking into. Oh, and these guys... Ooh, we know where Queek most likely is. These guys just lost Karakazool. Interesting. Military advancements, I guess, is the choice here. 2.5k perhaps, but there's a lot of good techs that we uh, need to go. Also, I keep reduction minus 10% for dragon units out of Awakening the Ancient Ones. Though I fear that since we don't have a lot of dragon units, we want martial law and recall colonists first. And then we can ignore these and grab the uh, dragon stuff afterwards. At least that's what I feel makes the most sense. Anyway, wait, what? Hostile hero damage walls? How dare you. Walls of Toranrock. I, I just don't think we care that much. Ooh, actually, since we no longer have the public order debuff, that's good for us. First off, Marathi, <laughs> why did you revive here? What are you doing? And Torelosaur, what are you doing? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Marathi, die again. Hopefully they didn't... Yeah, okay, no, we're fine. Actually, that shouldn't have hurt the archers as much as it did, but whatever, it's money. And it's money, and we got another Vambraces of Defense out of that. A Great Eagle for Gondol and a Nithilmar Chariot, but no, 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 no. This is Eagle Army, and thus Eagle you shall have, ride, whatever. Uh, Renowned Logistics... Hmm, this Illyrian Reaver buff is probably irrelevant to us. We could try to get towards Favored by Isha again. Or we could go through Renowned into... Well, we're not really defending right now. It's just a decent buff for a single point, so I think we'll still take it. But the thing I wanted to do was change the Eagle out, which is what can we I did. You can move briefly back to Arnheim. We'll ignore Amelia Brown. She's not a threat. And then we'll move through... Wait. Ah, damn. I was wanting to see if we could march stance on down to Moonshare, but it looks like no. All right. Towards the thigh. Upgrade the War Hall here. And in two turns, we'll be ready to start constructing new units. You are going to start collecting income again and switching back to Tribute to the Phoenix King. Minus nine. All right, one more turn, and then when, once we switch, then we'll do it. What about Gunbad? You are at also minus nine. It's still kind of iffy. It's still kind of iffy. I think we'll ignore it. Here we're okay. Here we are whoo, just okay, though once again we can build up the timber mill, I guess. What is expensive? Let's build up the war hall here first for very cheap, mind you. This place, next turn, we'll need to rebuild Lost Splendor as we'll be able to upgrade either the demon stump for the gates of Jar. And this place is also good. I guess for one turn you can go to Tower of Gorgoth and then head southward. The rest of this looks fine to me. And I guess we're good again. Yes, yes. Unless I'm forgetting something, and it's Diplo that I'm forgetting, so yes I am. Alright, first of all, Confederation. Still no. Bunch of idiots. Alrighty, Tyrannox still wants a defensive alliance. Exiles of Nehek are ready for some friendliness. Eh, you know what, Kotip? And he'll give us a trade agreement as well. Nice. Alright, what else do we have? Western and Northern Provinces will probably be able to be friendly with the Western Provinces by virtue of declaring war on the Caravan of Blue Roses when we do so, though that's not right now. Next, I believe, we are good to go. Just want to double check that Queek is not around. I'm worried for the F Ashridge Mountains. You know what? Go here. We can use you to defend it. Because you have dwellers below, so any rat stack that comes a-callin' is gonna be uh, very much in trouble. 
And then I guess we could move you potentially up here to recruit to, to start recruiting the uh, next defensive army. Which we can then use to potentially go after Grimgore while Imric deals with uh, and deals with the Badlands, boot with corn and the rats and all of that. And assign skill points, building upgrades, outposts here not moved, outposts not moved, and in turn. I hope that Thorg doesn't run, because I'd love that full stack fight a Kugath. Okay, I wasn't expecting that either. Damn. <laughs> hmm. That's a little bit annoying because he's liable to retake the scrap towers, but I think we have to prioritize Thorg. And we can't have this army sort of running around here. And Scrap Towers isn't part of the... Uh, isn't part of the Dragon Isle, so it's not a big deal. You want a defensive alliance? No. The Org is not gonna run. Beautiful. That means a fight for Emmerich. There's that upkeep reduction that we wanted. Then, I guess... Well, you can... Yeah, no, you're fine. Uh, you can start collecting the income. Good. And then recruiting next turn, you can keep ignoring Amelia Brown. Oh wow, Skeggy's still alive? How'd that happen? It's kind of impressive, actually. <laughs> go figure. Uh, you're gonna go into the Moonshard. Or actually... Yeah, you're gonna go into the Moonshard. The thing is, his army's still hurt, so we'll go there, then we'll go through Grey Rock Point. Probably gonna take two turns, but it's probably worth it if we take the island. Technologies, martial law is the main thing. Archers and spears and silver and guard for cheap. And I have talked enough, so let's switch you to noble prestige and let's hit pig border. Man, we would have been able to destroy Kugath's main stack. Oh, what's the likelihood that he dies? I mean, he still has flayed rock. Even if, uh,. I don't think Grisus will kill him. I think we can't leave this here. The other option would be to use Arwenel to... Oh, she won't be able to reach it anyway. Never mind. I was going to say use Arwenel to attack. Let's level you and then let's get into it. We have Lord of Dragons now, so I think we can start moving into Sky Master to buff your dragons. And then Vanguard Master to buff the uh, Dragon Princes. You, Michaela. Let's start moving through. We are the Elite... Uh, I do use Flaming Sword of Ruin as well. I mean, Fire Lore is quite nice, so there's basically a lot of stuff that we use in it, no matter what. Oh, you know what? Let's get you Renowned. Once again, it's a decent single... No, I lied. We still want Favored by Isha first. And just for that post-battle loot, even if it ain't all that much. Yeah. Alrighty, Arwenel, I'm not gonna bother leveling you. Frankly, we don't need it. We're gonna head to Pig Barter next. I really don't understand why these guys decided to declare war on us, but hey... It'll give us a nice fight, too. Full stacks and... Ooh, they got some good stuff. Lead Belchers, Maneaters with Ogre Pistols. Very scary to dragons in particular. Yeah. This looks like a fight worth fighting, Emmerich. You should be happy, my friend. Uh, you are going to follow. You know what? Maybe we will level you up for this after all. Oh, you have the two main things that I wanted to level up in the first place. And, I mean, I guess we could get Hand of Glory, but I'd probably rather use... You know what? Save the point. I'd probably use Summary the point for Michaela to cast anyway. Go. It's time to kill quite a lot of ogres. Go. To victory! Alrighty, here we go. Our dragon numbers have certainly increased. Michaela has a sun dragon now, and we have five to our names. The dragon flight is real at last. Certainly, uh, well, I don't know how many dragons we're actually going to have in Emmerich's army at the end, as in the final form of his army, but, well, I'm sure it'll be a fair few, together with those dragon princes. Anyway, um... On this battle, I wasn't expecting this to be an actual walled settlement. I'm always surprised to see a walled settlement when it's the ogres that we see. And as you guys know by now, I'm sure the walled settlements have a tendency to be uh, uh, have a tendency to be desynced and bugged and don't work as cinematics. So in that light, we're going to try to avoid the bug, the desync, by sending in only the dragons and seeing how much of the enemy. Uh, 
uh, how much of the enemy army or how much of the enemy settlement we can clear with just the dragons alone. All five dragons get their breath out before joining the fray against some iron guts led by a fire belly down here. Lamoureux trying to actually land, having a little bit of a tough time. Come on now, there we go. Touching down, and it's time to mince some ogres. Fortunately, ogres are big enough, I think, to be a great meal for our dragons, so they should enjoy this. Both the battle aspect and what comes after, as uh, they eat their fill as well. And hopefully the uh, desync won't happen. Anyway, so far our dragons are looking pretty good. We engage our buffs of Flaming Sword of Ruin and the Dragon Horn at the same time to increase both damage and melee attack at the same time. Imric will also drop his bound uh, Dragon Fire ability or whatever, Dragon Heart, or I don't remember the name of the ability. Piercing Bolts of Burning. His bound piercing bolts ability. While we continue working on all those ogres, they have uh, died in droves already, but this is a just a bare beginning opening skirmish to this particular battle, as there are so, so many ogres more where that came from. Here come uh, some uh, gorgers who are unbreakable, and unlike the rest, will have to be killed to an ogre or eaten. I think, if nothing else, the ogres will appreciate the, uh, you know, eat or be eaten uh, sort of action that we've got going on. And uh, they are definitely, well, they're definitely eyeing the dragons as a pretty big meal as well, probably remembering the legends of the Sky Titans and those epic meals. But this is a few too many dragons at once for them. Anyway, let's see how we're doing here. Bounce power is in our favor, just very slightly, but look how many ogres still remain. It's actually quite smart of the AI not to blob up so many at once, because we'd just be able to use more spells and more breath abilities on more units at once. And ogres have a very bad tendency to get in each other's way during fights, which means that, uh, well, there's definitely a limit to how many they'd be able to push here. Unfortunately for the ogres, though, with their relatively low melee attack at 32 on these guys, so uh, let's see, or at least the Iron Fists, the Iron Guts at 45, which is decent, and they might be able to damage the uh, the other dragons, but Imric with his 77 melee defense, uh, they're going to have a very tough time dealing with him and Menefnir. Welcome to the Dragon Blender, ogres. And of course we can also wait on the cooldowns of the Dragon Breaths and then get those going once more as needed. Ooh, looks like the enemy's getting a little bit of support, activating a Wissens Wild Form I believe is the buff. Yeah, Wissens Wild Form on the Ogre Bulls with dual weapons, probably should have used that on the Iron Guts instead however, as the regular Ogre Bulls don't have too much of a chance against Dragons. Although we do have to remember that the Sun Dragons at least have relatively low armor and uh, thus going to be a lot more vulnerable than the Neathnir and uh, Lamoureux. Alright, gonna have to lift one of our dragons off. The enemy artillery piece has been quite annoying and uh, we're gonna have to deal with it. Oh, I lied. First dragon is just gonna breathe. On a few oh, Iron Guts and Gorgers down here, we'll send the next one to deal with that artillery piece while we continue obliterating piles of ogres. And, yep, yeah, ooh, well, looks like the dragon, oh, that was pretty cool. The dragon looked like it flew through all of the, uh, all of the projectiles. Well, we can dodge a projectile and bathing a wooden construct, a wooden artillery piece in fire is probably not something that is generally survivable. 1 HP and there it is. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Down goes the scrap launcher and we can return Solaire to the rest of the fight. The enemy lord has also arrived to lead the rest of his ogre piles against the dragon pile. But I fear for him that it may, it will not be any more effective than uh, this pile of ogres was without him. If nothing else, 
even though it's just a dragon brawl in one location without too much to say and tactically this is a great debut of a pile of dragons working together considering we hadn't seen this yet and it's about time for an Imric campaign well, I'm sure we could kill these ogres a lot faster if we had the dragon princes in here as well. Once again, I fear that attacking the walls would just cause a desync and they wouldn't work right anyway. At least this way it seems to be working. I, I honestly can't tell whether there's a desync happening or not because this is basically how the battle happened. It's not like there's a lot of units to control or move into other locations, as they're all just sitting in one place. And continuing to fight, which I wager they'll be doing for quite the while. Yeah, bounce power about maybe 65% in our favor, and the ogres just keep on moving reinforcements in unit by unit with plenty more to go. The enemy tyrant goes down at last, or was that a slaughtermaster? I guess it doesn't really matter. Yeah, Zimric has killed him off either way. And how are we doing here? Getting ready for another spell, another bound ability, or or a non-bound piercing bolts, but piercing bolts aplenty in this particular battle. A flamestorm probably wouldn't have been particularly effective. And though I do wonder, hmm, what's the fire resistance like on our dragons? Just out of curiosity, we got 30% on you, we got 50% on the sun dragons, and 30% on the... Uh, uh, 50% on uh, the Ice Dragon, slash Moon Dragon. Hmm. Imric has 80%, so he wouldn't really be threatened by it at all. I mean, I guess they're single entities, so they wouldn't be particularly threatened by Flamestorm in general. It's only potential for uh, having the dragons fight in a Flamestorm. Maybe I'll try that next time, we'll see. I'm just a little bit concerned here because we don't actually have much in the way of healing. We do have, ooh, that was a nice combination, piercing bolts and fire breath coming down from Gordonar as well. But yeah, we do have a reinforcement coming in with that Apotheosis, which does have uh, quite a bit of range. And Michaela does look like she needs it. Once again, should these uh, Sun Dragons are relatively fragile, Michaela is uh, starting to take quite a bit of damage there. Down below half HP. And there's still many, many ogres to work through. And I didn't realize that they had this many Iron Guts as well. Iron Guts, of course, with those great weapons of theirs and being armor-piercing. And thus, by the looks of it, beginning to actually be threats. Another fire breath comes down, though it looks like the fire breaths aren't quite, or the dragon breaths, I guess, in general. Maybe not the star dragon breaths, but the other breaths don't seem to be quite as effective against the uh, piles of ogres, as we certainly see not too many models die. Maybe five or so. It's not too bad, but it doesn't have quite the uh, sort of, uh, quite the effect when it's a pile of infantry and, like, several hundred of them explode. And not in a good way. Let's see, eight and a half minutes in of just straight up dragons versus ogres brawling. Emric is completely fine though, and he hasn't uh, he hasn't needed to activate the armor of Kalidor a single time as yet. There's also the fact that Lamoro has been with us, and Lamoro really helps out for with a number of for a number of reasons. It's got the bolstered armor, so it buffs up all the dragons with more armor and physical resistance when we're in a blob, plus that chilling aura, plus Plus that frostbite, completely crippling enemy speed and buffing us up. So it's a good sort of support dragon. While I guess the fire fire dragons and the star dragon do the damage. Though Imrek will definitely have at least a couple more regular star dragons. As Minerathnir feels lonely. If only we could get an Emperor Dragon, but uh, Emperor Dragons are uh, are the one type of dragon that isn't uh, isn't tameable, or has never been tamed, and are obviously also you know not in the game, but you know. <laughs> But it would be nice if Imrak had a, I don't know, a special quest or a final battle to tame a, uh, to tame an emperor dragon, the oldest, wisest, and etc, etc, strongest, 
of all dragons. Alright, how we doing? Certainly a while here's another piercing bolt of burning coming down and a few more of the ogres. If you're wondering where the other dragons are, all three of the sun dragons peeled off to destroy this tower, which was firing on one of the units up here. And while they were destroying the tower, they were getting heals from our, uh, from our mage there. And just to uh, top them up a little bit, especially Michaela, who was down below half HP. Imrek doesn't care about any of this and has 218 ogre kills and 105,000 damage so far. He's uh, He's been doing well, and Manehithnir has certainly eaten well today. And the Sun Dragons have returned, a little bit healed up. Michaela at about 60% HP now, but certainly enough to return to the Dragon Blender and continuing on blend or continue blending those ogres. All right, well, that's roughly how this battle is going to go. Let's speed it up a little bit as the brawl does get a little bit samey when they're all obliterated. Plus, the enemy's big blobs have, at this point, more or less run out. And just gotta work on the enemies one by one. Here comes some saber tusks. Poor little kitties. Uh, they're going to uh, have a pretty bad day as well, I'd wager. And a nice pounce from Lamoureux into those uh, into those saber tusks. Looks like more regular ogres are joining the fray as well. And huh, do ogres use ogres use greenskin barricades? Oh, I guess it's a greenskin settlement. That's why. Yeah, it's a greenskin settlement. And dwarfen settlement that's been that orcified. All right, how are we doing now? 80% balance of power, still some ogres remaining, but they are certainly starting to run out. And just run out of bodies at this point, and we keep dropping those piercing bolts on the enemy while the dragons continue working their way through. I think I've said that the fifth time this time around, but once again, with uh, without using the rest of our army tactically, this is just, this is just a win the day by brawling. And this is probably the not the most efficient way to do this in the sense that we could have also just sort of found isolated units, lifted all the piles of dragons off, and then had them uh, uh, had them find units that are by themselves or maybe with smaller numbers of units, kill those off without being under threat at all and taking no damage. But of course, that would have taken a lot longer. Plus, at least this way, the enemy at least has something of a chance of hurting us, though, judging by the uh, pile of corpses here, it ain't going so well. There we go, and this also feels just very lorefully appropriate. A single big dragon can destroy multiple armies in the lore. Dragons, once again, are scary. So when a few units of archers just pincushion and kill one off uh, in the game, because, well, larger units have a tendency to be, uh, to be a big old targets. And, right, and uh, sort of arrow sponges. It doesn't feel quite as appropriate. This very much does. All right, and the rest of the dragons are going to fly off a little bit just to allow Imrik to fight mostly because he's not really threatened by the remaining ogres and can kill them off fairly easily. Frankly, Imrik could have probably won this entire battle by himself. It would have just taken absolute ages, as even with all five dragons, we're already 16 minutes in. Well... Minus the, the speeding up that we did. And Emek continuing to drop at least one ogre with every hit of Manaethnir. And soon the ogres will just have to be clambering over... Uh, and clambering over each other's bodies to attempt to get to the dragon. Still, this is like ogre fishing. Big old pile of uh, bait. All the ogres will come running for their chance to eat a dragon. And bait because we're the ones catching them. 
There's gotta be a whole hassle to feed a dragon otherwise. Especially if you're rely if your army is reliant on the dragons existing, them flying off to go uh, uh, to go hunt and eat stuff would potentially uh, potentially leave you vulnerable. Anyway, Imric will continue ripping his way through the remnants of the enemies. He's up to 292 kills and 147,000 damage. All right, there we go. Well, you, well, you know what? I think we've seen enough of the animations of Imrik and Co. Getting a little bit more healing on the rest of our units, but let's just uh, speed up through the rest of this. We 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 get the idea of what happened here, and what happened was an absolutely horrific slaughter of every ogre. They keep on trying to go after Imrik and Manathnir, and every single ogre gets torn apart. No, that's a full HP unit of uh, uh, of ogre pistols. Now, ogre pistols are a extremely scary for those that uh, uh, didn't watch my Aramessa campaign or are not familiar with them especially in SFO they can just kill a single entity a big single entity in a few volleys it was using them essentially as snipers in that campaign and things like a mammoth things like a mammoth uh, <laughs> would die in just a few volleys it was pretty crazy not so good against targeting uh, sort of uh, piles of infantry, but against these big old single entities. Absolutely crazy. Now that said, unfortunately for them, uh, the AI didn't really utilize them properly, and I believe the AI had two of those units of ogre pistols in this particular army. What it should have done is waited until our dragons were all blobbed up and unable to leave the mass of other ogres, and then just started using their pistols to fire at our dragons over the heads of the other ogres due to the size of the dragons, and thereby probably dealing a massive amount of damage. Probably to the other dragons, however, because Imrik has the armor of Kaldor. Anyway, the man-eaters are pretty much done, the last of the ogres are done, and uh, what remains in the enemy settlement will at last shatter. Pretty darn good, 300 and... I didn't see what number it was, but a bunch of kills on Imrik. And if you're wondering why the battle hasn't ended, Gorgers are in stock, so I don't know where they are, and uh, now Imrik is flying around looking for them. He'll find them eventually, but it'll take a bit so I could do that off screen. Alright, there we go. Bit of a weirdly fought battle, admittedly, but uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. And uh, hey, it's not like we're not going to use or try out our dragons now that we have them in uh, pretty uh, decent numbers. Imrik got himself nearly 200,000 damage, and he has no spells to speak of. That's just pure murder power, which was uh, pretty darn solid. The other dragons did... Uh, well as well 75k damage 76k damage 69k damage and 78 on Michaela and her son dragon as well very very nice it looks like Gordonar champion of the flame just edged out the other dragons but uh, Solaire got the most kills Alamara got to the sort of mid ground, and then Michaela did better, but the, well, she has spells, so it's not quite the fair comparison. Anyway, anyway, uh, I do find it deliciously ironic that the ogres spend their lives looking for a proper meal, but at the end of the day, it was they who became a proper meal for our dragons. Occupy the place. I believe we can't build the landmark at Pig Barter, but that doesn't really matter. And what does matter. Hmm, look at the income here, you know what, don't bother for now. Ow, what the, it had a bloody, <laughs> it had a bloody rally field. Oh, go figure. I mean, I guess, huh. I mean, the main reason I wanted one of these here was to build Lothran Seaguard, not Silverin Guard, because uh, we don't need them in every army. Moranian's Way Shards, stock Vanguard deployment. Vanguard deployment for archers and spearmen units. Are you suggesting this is for all Vanguard? for all archer and spearman units in the army? Because it doesn't say Lord's Army. 
Arathon got his sun dragon. Arathon, I would love to, but no, you have to have a griffin and or eagle, so you're gonna keep that. Everqueen's court guards available, keepers of the flame available, all stuff too expensive oh, for nice. now, uh, but it won't be this uh, too expensive eventually. Krakadrin, have we got those flame cannons yet? No, but perhaps eventually uh so you currently have that Kane's ring of fury i'm going to assume oh, so take the van races of defense i guess uh it doesn't say lord's army however we put this on you no, it doesn't say it doesn't say it gives them vanguard deployment huh attribute vanguard deployment for archers and spearmen units well, we'll see when he, when he fights his first battle. Hopefully it's not a broken item, as that would be unfortunate. For now, you can have the Kane's Ring of Fury instead. Uh, once again, as long as this army doesn't have casters, it's just going to be the case. Next up, we get the Talismans of Loic. I think we can get rid of them. Uh, Shrieking Blades will keep, but the Scrolls of Shielding I'm not big on. Did we just get a second Kane's Ring of Fury? <laughs> Oh, man, okay. Uh, sort of Battle and Sort of Might fuse into something better. An Obsidian Lodestone. Amulet of Fire. Mm, not good enough. Fuse. Blade of Darting Steel. Melee attack plus, plus 10. I don't think crazy, but also... Mm, I mean, it's usable. Terrifying Mask of E-Power Stone. Shrieking Blade Dragon Scale Shield is actually pretty nice. So we'll keep you... Iron Curse Icon, can we... I guess that it would depend on whether we want to keep the Feather Foe Torque or not. And we might, considering we'll have some uh, arranged armies. Still not sure who to put the Sun Shard on. Probably going to put it in for... S mm, maybe the leader of the Fire Army? That seems like the thing to do. You need me. Yeah. Anyway, you, sir, you don't need Heart of the Flame. What I would like you to do... I mean, we probably want to get him hard to hit because he's a little bit fragile on... Ooh. We've also got the speed of a Surian potential. It does take three points, though, but it does give him a lot of things. And he's vulnerable to missile fire as well. You know what? Let's get you Ward of Loic. I'll think about it. Maybe speed of a Surian, but I'm kind of inclined to go through Merchant Lord and then as fast as we can into Quartermaster for when he gets his more expensive troops. And it just seems like the... Uh, the decent investment. Architect... You're supposed to build the... I'm gonna say the Demon Stump. Seems like it... Well, actually, either one of these could be attacked by Grimgore pretty much at any time, so there's no real way to know. Uh, you can switch back to Growth and Banish Corruption, I guess. Do we need anything here? No, just keep on growing. Do we need anything here? Not that I can tell. And in fact, you should be switching to Growth as well. At least for now. Architect Luaran, I guess you're moving down to the Dragon Isles. We just gotta pop you into Black Fortress first, as we gotta make sure we can destroy these guys. We could peace out with them for ten turns. How much money would you give us for this? And just to redeclare war on them immediately. They'd be willing to give us 2.5k. This would allow us to ignore the Ruins End territory for a few turns and instead push on towards Kugath and his stuff. And then potentially the uh, the Blue Roses. And then, frankly, potentially Goldtooth. He was really not liking us. And now that the Thunder Guts have declared war on us, he doesn't like that either. And I want his defeat trade as well. Yes, yes, Kugath. Yeah, you know what? I think that's a good idea. We're going to peace out with you temporarily. And we'll come back for you. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. Uh, Pig Barter, I guess we can then build the spice market here for more trade goods. Up to 5.2k now. Not bad, not bad. Uh, you... Can you immediately start recruiting? You can. And we do have capacity for Sea Guard now. Or Sea Guard? so costly to recruit, but what can you do? Alright, let's check out the building building, since we do have cash to throw around, at least to some degree. Black Fortress, you are fine as you are. I'm still tempted to delete this, but not yet. Are we ready to start recruiting the new units? Oh, wait. Huh. Actually, that reminds me. Did we not get, like, a cheap... Huh. Am I crazy? I was gonna. You have ridiculed. No. You have incompetent. No. Fortuitous. No. 
Hmm, I guess I didn't. There was a prince or princess or something that I wanted to get. Not the punitive one, which is great. But this is going to be the leader of our elite sort of uh, ranged army. Because we're going to have two types of ranged armies. One's going to be super elite with like... Uh, uh, with like Sisters of Avalorn and Shadow Warriors, perhaps, or something along those lines. The other one's going to have the Lothar and Seagar, but there's a different trait specifically for them that reduces their upkeep massively, which is what I wanted. We could potentially get to you, but at a hundred... A uh, hundred influence, it's a little bit steep. Plus... Hmm. Plus he wouldn't have magics. I'm inclined to say, at least for now, we use Feodian to lead the army until we can get the uh, uh, the other lord up and running. And I think we forego the dragon princes. At least for, like, the next few turns. Once Simric comes back around, we'll uh, give them to him. Now, what we need to be careful about... Able to go into encamp sense. If you go here... Need to be careful about getting attacked by Queek's army while, uh, while recruiting. I don't think he'd be able to reach us easily from here. Black Iron Mine. Ah, that's where Queek is. Okay, so that's concerning. Fortunately, Crookback Mountain can defend itself. And, oh, we actually need to go all the way up here, don't we? Hmm. Alright, fine. Uh, then go into Lilith's Blessing and then start moving this way. We'll march Stancy up to Crookback and then we will start recruiting Lothar and Seaguard with the U rather than with Arwenel. I guess we could start moving Arwenel back to transfer some of the High Elven Archers to that army, just because we're already paying for them, but uh, well, it's not the biggest of concerns. Let's say, Scrap Terrors, we can ignore you. Mount Gunbed. Still tempted to collect the income, but... Uh -huh. The quarter is still hugely problematic, so we could get a plus four out of building two colonnades, which will put us at minus five, which is still too much. We need the high place itself. So I think we just allow the place to keep on growing and not collect the income. And then we'll obviously change that up as we go. Toranrock, you're kind of in the same position. Just keep on growing. We'll need to develop you some way anyway. Anyway, anyway. The uh, rest of that looks good to me, so we can skip, skip, skip. There's also outpost potential, but, uh, well, there's other stuff we gotta do. Namely, I can start recruiting. So, let us get... Not the punitive one, because it's too expensive. Uh, somebody who's a little bit cheaper. Ridiculed, I guess. Wait, what does this do again? Character experience gain, but recruitment for, for Phoenix's reduction? Yeah, here's. Alright, yo. Assuming that there is nothing here that allows us to recruit better. Actually, there is. Rally set as a militia. I should have started with that. Hmm. Well, there's a little bit of public order for it, but it's not a big deal. Let's start with that next turn, then. And then we'll recruit at higher ranks. Start getting those Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers and Silver and Guard all at the same time. And, of course, the Eagles as well. All right. All right, that looks good. Now let's end the turn. Oh, you know what I should have done? Damn. And Kuget's going to attack Scrap Terrors. It's fine. Or, well, one of his little minion armies. And he's going to move there. Oh, Kugath. I think that was a mistake, sir. I'm not entirely sure whether we can reach it in a single bound with Thimric, but if he stays there, and decent likelihood he will, then we'll be good to go. And by the looks of it, nobody else will attack us. I see that Feodian is safe from Queek's attacking. Settlement Ross, Scrap Towers, it's fine. Schema Doom performed, that's annoying. And Grievous... Get a substantial income. Nearly there. Nearly there. And a Razor Standard. And another Book of the Phoenix. Damn. High Elves have some good items. And speaking of good High Elf items, uh, what we want to do... Yeah, I can't quite reach it. And we want to pop the next Invocation of Wall immediately. Because, well, we can only use it a limited amount of time. And it gets more and more expensive, even though it's already stupidly expensive. What can you do for him, right? Let's see what we got this time. All right, Jewel of the Dusk, eh, Lens of Magic Power Reserve Capacity is decent, nothing crazy. Uh, Ambush Defense Chance, 50%, good for fighting Skaven. A Reaver Bow gives us Magic Missiles. Crown of Authority gives us Control. Huh. I'll say these ones are kind of bad compared to... The last choice was great, this one not so much. Hmm... Man, I guess we could give the Reaver Bow to a princess and allow her to dish out more damage. 
via ranged attacks. Almost tempted to say that Winds of Magic Power Reserve might actually be the better item, but if the Princess does mostly range damage, then this will help, I guess. I'm glad I don't find either one to be particularly to be particularly good, and range damage is never going to be all that strong, and the Princess will eventually go on a, a dragon anyway. Yeah, nonetheless, Reaver Bow. All right. A bit of a shame that, but, uh, well, hopefully the next one will be better. And besides, one of the good things about not having confederated a lot of elves early is that they have time to repeatedly pop the Greater Invocation of Vol as well, and the AI does absolutely do that, which means when we confederate them, they'll have a bunch of these forged items as well. Now, will the AI have picked a good one? Who knows? Probably not, but, you know, uh, the possibility exists. Anyways, folks, with that, we are once more out of time, and I am going to call the episode here next time we begin recruitment for bell or bell uh Arathon's new army or improved army and we'll continue moving him towards marathi's territory to continue annoying her looks like katab's doing fairly well here including some territories that we potentially could have gotten for ourselves but whatever i don't think he'll hate us for destroying the uh, these wood elves as it may be necessary to do that but whether we do or we don't uh, we'll figure it out next time. Let me know your thoughts on Mr. Arathon, the Silver Talon, the Eagle Prince of Kalidor, and stay tuned for more Emmerich. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.